Hey guys, it's CS Joseph and welcome to a new era for the community, a post 40,000 subscribers era. And I would like to reward this community as a result of us celebrating of hitting 40,000 subscribers uh, finally after like, I don't know, three years ish of uh, the channel, etc. But uh, 40,000 subscribers, it's fantastic. And I would like to give you guys uh, something special. So if you keep watching past this video, you will have uh, the opportunity to watch this, which is known as the ultimate uh, study technique. It's not so much about studying per se, it's actually about how you can solve any of your life's problems, etc. And uh, I highly recommend you watch this uh, particular, um, it's, a, it's, it's a conference basically, I, I deliver a, a kind of a presentation and then there's Q&A afterwards, similar to how the live lectures work. But this is part of our journeyman tier in our membership. And journeyman uh, has so, so many episodes in it, uh, going all the way back from uh, February 2019, basically. So it's got well over a year and a half's worth of content in here doing these uh, once a month. And uh, especially some of the um, more famous ones, which we have uh, secrets of camaraderie, dating tips, etc. But the point is, is that this is the most cutting edge content that I do, where we talk about a lot of uh, the fringe in terms of Jungian analytical psychology that most people don't even know about, as well as some of my personal experiments that I've done in the field, as well as some of additional research that I've done in the field uh, that's largely connected to my work, et cetera, and what I've done. So anyway, I just wanted to give you folks an opportunity uh, to celebrate 40,000 subscribers by checking out uh, this uh, particular uh, episode that we have, which is the most recent one, our August 2021. And uh, I seriously hope that you folks decide to benefit uh, from uh, you know uh, watching it and, and that will improve your life. Hopefully you have the patience to get through it, but quite honestly, it's absolutely worth it. This particular video is definitely, uh, I think it's probably my best work uh, so far. So anyway, folks, uh, with that being said, uh, you can uh, become a journeyman at uh, csjoseph.life forward slash members and sign up for journeyman. Uh, or you can just uh, take this freebie and enjoy it. And hopefully it will improve your life in ways that you never thought possible. Anyway, folks, with that being said, I'll see you guys tonight. 10 minutes, 40 seconds in, and we're actually getting onto the content. So here we go. Yes, he's literally in the doghouse. Thank you for pointing that out. All right, so you guys ever get to a point in your life where you just like, you feel completely screwed? Um, you have like no idea how to even get out of the ditch or solving any of your problems? Because the reality of the situation is, is like everyone on the planet we all have problems, right? We have a ton of problems, and it just seems like the problems can be very unlimited. But then we're trying to find solutions. I'd actually posted on Facebook recently about how, you know, I, I'm capable in finding everyone, the answers to everyone else's problems, but I'm not capable in finding the answers to my own problems. Which, you know, it's kind of like that guy, Hitch, who's played by Will Smith in the film Hitch, basically. He can help all the other men out with their girl problems, but he can't help himself out with his own woman, basically. And it is a serious issue that he has on a regular basis. Well, solutions are always out of reach, always out of reach. Like people just don't really know what to do. It's like, okay, well, how do I, how do I actually do this, you know? Because everyone's got some problems, you know. Let's say someone's like trying to lose weight or trying to get a six pack, but it doesn't matter what they do, they always get screwed. Or they're trying to pass algebra and they don't even know how to do it. They're always trying to get screwed, basically. So it's there's a lot of examples of this, you know, throughout our lives, even throughout history, where people just are gripping with their problems, but they can't find the solutions they need to those problems. So what's, what's the issue? What really, really is the issue? Well, where do, where do problems actually, what are problems actually really about? It's people. People are the source of problems. 
People are the source of problems themselves, etc. Gosh, I don't even know why she put this on my desk. I don't want it on my desk anymore. Um, but then you also have solutions. People are the solutions. So the first step is, is that like in order to make sure things are no longer out of reach, you need to realize that, uh, you know, people equal problems. And they also need to understand that uh, people equal solutions. So why, why is that relevant? It's relevant because you can't just find the answer by going to a Google search. Google is not good enough. Google, you know, like Google is like literally a unicorn, right? And it's like, yeah, I'm gonna Google it, right? I'm gonna find the answer I'm looking for. No, that's not really true. For one, you always gotta remember that Google is pretty biased uh, and it's trying to sell you some solutions, basically. They're just trying to make money. You have to understand what Google's actual interest is. It's all about making money, etc. So that's not really going to work. So you gotta stay away from, from Google. You gotta stay away from all this crap because then you're just gonna end up wasting time. Folks, I spent so much time, like so for example, I'll give you an anecdote from my own life. So one problem that I had, I had a problem, okay? And my problem was my sexless marriage. That was uh, my marriage, I had a problem. Uh, and then the solution to that problem I was like, okay, it's got to be psychology, right? Which is true. Psychology is the solution, basically, to marriage. It really, it really comes down to psychology, right? No matter, no matter what I do or what I claim or however it goes, problem versus solution. So what I started doing was I started doing a whole bunch of things. So I obviously did the first thing anyone would do, go to because it doesn't cost you anything. I went to Google, then I went to Wikipedia, right? Then I went to various blogs, etc. And then I started to read a ton of books. I read every relationship book under the sun. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus, for example. I read those books. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, I read Real Marriage, I read Love and Respect. I And honestly, I never actually found the answer. Did I, did I get the answer? The answer to that is no, I did not get the answer. I didn't get no answer at all. So there's no real point. So I'm like, I don't think that maybe I have a bigger problem here. What was, I had an even bigger problem than I even realized. And the, here's the bigger problem right here. The bigger problem wasn't necessarily my aunt, my marriage. My bigger problem was is that I was literally unable to find the answer, okay? I literally couldn't find the answer to my marriage. And the solution, yes, it was psychology, and that's cool and whatnot. But what kind of psychology, right? I couldn't find the answer. It didn't matter how many blogs I went through. It didn't matter how much Googling I did. It didn't matter how much research. I was unable to find the answer. And this is a problem that a lot of people have in their life. This is a serious problem. It's a serious issue. And it didn't matter until I read a lot of books. So I took the standard expert intuition, hero, um, uh, introverted sensing, inferior ENP approach to uh, trying to find the solution to the problem. So it's like, okay, I can't spend any time on my marriage at all. This is not a priority. This is the priority now. So what I decided to do is I need to spend time to figure out how to find the answers that I need to any problem, basically. So, which basically led to the creation of a formula that I'm gonna be sharing with you folks tonight that will help you find the answer to any problem in any area of your life, basically. Um, it's pretty awesome to have that. Uh, but before then, I to develop this particular formula, I, 
it was pretty hard. It was pretty hard to do that because I couldn't find the answer. And my real problem I wanted to solve was my marriage, but I couldn't do that. I had to solve this problem first. I was unable to find the answer to basically anything. It didn't matter how much Wikipedia I read. It didn't matter how much Google, how many books, how many blogs, how much articles, how many Mayo Clinic bullshit that I see. You know what I'm saying? None of that is of any actual value. So I had to go even deeper. So I started experimenting, and you know how NTPs sure love to experiment, because we have this thing where we do trial and error. It's a very horrible thing to subject yourself to. So I started doing trial and error, and I knew that this would take me a long ass time. So what I decided to do is that I actually, my answer for trial and error was to literally read every relationship book out there. I, I, I read them all, basically. Read every relationship book out there. Did I find the answer? Did the answer actually come? No. Still no. I was basically completely and utterly screwed, still. Guys, I, I read every relationship book out there. I hired multiple consultants trying to tell me. I went through various courses to try to get their assistance uh, on my marriage or relationships, and nobody could actually tell me the answer I was looking for. And in fact, it wasn't until I started learning Jungian analytical psychology because eventually I wound up, I wound up getting involved with MBTI. I went to MBTI thinking that MBTI might be the solution to my, you know, marriage problem, right? But that also, uh, you know, blew up in my face. That didn't help anyone either. That was still a no go. And then I met my, uh, then I met my mentors, which, oh, gosh, this device is not working for me right now. Dang. Why is it doing this? Apparently my whiteboard is bugged. That's annoying. Okay, maybe it's back. So I met my mentors. So uh, good old Robert Bryant. Robert Bryant, mentor one, he's an ESTP, even though he thinks he's an ISTP and whatnot. And, you know, he he taught me the taught me the type grid, that's cool. It's nice having the type grid, you know. Uh, he taught me manhood, that's cool. What manhood's all about, etc. Among other things. And I still did was I actually able to save my marriage? Nope. Nope. No, 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 no. It was still a waste. A complete waste. Still not able to get the answers that I needed to solve my own problems. It was a huge issue. An absolute huge problem for me. So, how many of you out there have you know been in your life where you just constantly are getting brick walls over and over with the problems that you're facing in your life and to the point where you either like resort to just completely giving up or you resort to fight or flight or maybe in some cases people resort to suicide in those particular situations where they have no idea how to solve their problems. We live in a day and age where we have Google and Wikipedia and all these articles and bloggers and all of this knowledge that's out there today to help us solve our problems, etc. That uh, you know we can't we can't get there. You know what I'm saying? How how is it there? You know, and and, and we also have gender issues on top of that. How can we actually find the answers to give us the solutions? to the problems that plague us within our life, okay? Are you guys like, are you guys done with me like har harping on this concept? Because even within my own journey to solve the problems within my own marriage, and I'm using my old marriage as an example, I was not able to even find the answer to the problem. 
Actually, I wasn't even able to find the answers to the problem of my first marriage until the year of 2020. And we've been divorced since 2016, okay? Four years ago. Had I known what I know in 2020, that those problems wouldn't have been a problem anymore. At least that's the situation I, I would hope given the knowledge that I've gained since then. But here's the problem. Most people don't know how to look. That's the real issue. People don't know how or where to look. Now, you go to like the Bible in the New Testament, it says, ask, seek, knock, and it will be given to you, which basically is another way of saying, don't give up. As long as you don't give up, you'll be given the answer eventually. Well, in my particular case, I didn't have really have the answer during uh, my marriage per se. I had to, the marriage had to completely break apart before I could actually get the answer. So the timing on that was not the best in the world. It's not exactly that I'm saying that the Bible is wrong per se, but it also never said there would be a guarantee of like, you know, proper timing in that particular moment, which is really frustrating. So allow me to show you a different model, a different take. Let me begin to show you the formula, okay? So I'm gonna write down the formula right here on how you can solve your problems. It's gonna be a bit of a whiteboard here. Yes, I'm literally, um, this is an ENFJ. Um, I'm literally writing out the type grid here. So give me a minute. Okay, ISFJ, ISTP, ISFP, INTJ. And then we have INTP, INFJ, oops, and INFP, wow, literally stop doing that, okay, awesome, okay, type grid. And now let's introduce some vectors to the type grid, okay, we got compatibility. Compatibility, we have camaraderie. Got these little vectors here. Don't forget folks, this is an abacus. The type grid is an abacus, okay? All right, and we're going to be using a formula to utilize this abacus to solve all of our problems, to, to find all the answers to all the questions we'd ever need, okay? Compatibility, we have camaraderie. We also have something called identity. Identity is absolutely crucial. We have never talked about identity before, or at least not anything that makes a lot of sense. I am now going to provide you with a web resource involving identity. Check it out. I highly recommend you go to this website. It's called typelogic.com. This is one of the original resources that I used to learn uh, Jungian analytical psychology a long ass time ago. It's one of the original resources, okay? So I'm gonna click ENTP because I'm an ENTP. It's got the, uh, the ENTP description. It's got cognitive functions, etc. It's got their interpretation of who some famous uh, ENTPs were which a lot of them I disagree with, absolutely. Some of them I do agree with. George Carlin, I do agree with. Uh, I disagree with Thomas Edison. I agree with Weird Al for sure. I disagree with Alfred Hitchcock, he's an INTP. David Spade is yes. Rachel Ray is yes. Rodney Dangerfield, maybe, not sure. Matthew Perry, absolutely, he's an ENTP. Um, Tom Hanks, hell no, no he's not. But then you have something amazing down here in this little tool called the type relationships for ENTPs. And you have counterpart, neighbor, novelty, right? Contrast, cohort, pedagogue. Ooh, pedagogue. 
Let's check that out. Oh wait, that's the INFJ. Interesting. You see what I'm saying? This is a fantastic tool for translating the type relationships for whichever type you are. But then they have this little thing over here called identity. Let's click identity. What comes up for identity for ENTPs? Oh, that's right, ENTPs, okay? So going back to our whiteboard, identity basically means, it means your own type, essentially. We're gonna use this as a vector to utilize as abacus to help us find the exact answers to all of the problems we have, to find all the solutions that we have. We just need to use these vectors to do it, right? So we're gonna call these prime vectors, okay? And then we're going to have uh, other vectors as well. Um, so let's see here, let's use a different color. So prime vectors, we're gonna, uh, they're basically nature vectors, okay? So this is, uh, this is nature, okay? And then we're going to have nurture vectors. Yes, it's pretty nice using calculus, huh? To uh, calculus combined with Jungian analytical psychology to get all of the answers to all of your questions. Yay. All right, so we got nurture in here. Let's talk about nurture. What do we got? Mentors. Mentors are a big deal. Um, teachers. Uh, masters. Um, and then uh, books, uh, resources, articles, uh, Google, but Google's terrible. Well, just use that as an example. So search engine, basically, articles, resources, books, masters, teachers, mentors, uh, classes, I guess you could put in university. Whoa, university. Um, so yeah. So we have our vectors now. We have our nature vectors and we have our nurture vectors that we're going to be utilizing to solve the problem of Chase's marriage, basically, right? But it could be really any problem. It could be any problem. You can think of a problem and we'll, we'll, we can solve it very, very easy, okay? Now, I'm using this abacus example. It's really a roundabout way of saying something very, very simple. The formula is extremely simple, but I want to show you why the formula works. I don't wanna just give you the formula. I wanna show you why it works, okay? So, um, all right, all right, can I get a volunteer from the audience right now? Can I get a volunteer to volunteer uh, someone to pick on? Um, just uh, say like, yeah, I'll, I volunteer and then tell me uh, your type basically. And give me, a, give me a problem, give me a problem that you have, a problem that you wanna have solved basically. Because this abacus will be a compass to tell us where to get the answer to our problem, okay? It's a compass, all right? So someone, someone, uh, oh, Candace, I will, I will make you volunteer. Don't worry, don't worry. I, I will make you volunteer. So, okay, James Morkin, or emailed anthrax. We could do this. We could do this with multiple people, guys. Just state some problems that you need to have solved in your life. Okay. State some problems that you need to have solved in your life, and what your type is, and we'll go through this. And I'm going to be writing people's names on this abacus. Okay. So you volunteer as tribute. Okay. INFJ. He needs more money. All right. So we got emailed anthrax in the house. Okay. So we're going to put anthrax right here. You have anthrax. The dude's broke. He needs some cash. Okay. And we got uh, we got Barb. She's up here. I don't know what she needs though, but we know that anthrax needs some cash. Okay. So anthrax. Let's go in black ink. So four sides of the mind for anthrax. We have INFJ. 
we have ESTP, okay, and then we have ENFP, and then we have, uh, so ESTP, right, underneath ESTP, we have um, um, ISTJ, excuse me, a little tired today, depression, all right, we could solve that too, depression, okay, we've got some problems. Um, I'll even throw myself in here. Why not? C.S. Joseph. Um, and, uh, let's say my problem is, uh, obesity. Okay. I got, it got chased in there. Okay. Uh, INTP, meaning in life. We got Michael Knight in the house. Okay, so we got Michael Knight. Okay, meaning in life. Awesome. All right, so here's just some examples. So we got four people on our abacus, right? But you only really need one. Um, okay. Uh, wow. Okay, I'll put you. Uh, I'll put you down over here. We got James, and we'll just say uh, uh, relationships. We'll just say that. Cool. Awesome. All right. So our abacus is now loaded. Um, we're ready to go. We're we're ready to start finding to use the compass to find out where and how we're going to solve our problems, basically. So, uh, all right. So, now we need to kind of figure this out. What do you, uh, so, ask yourself this. Why do people buy books? Why do people go to classes, right? It's because they need skills or they need solutions, okay? So the whole point of nurture over here is to give us skills and solutions. And I don't know why I'm going up there, but skills and solutions, right? Because skills and solutions at the end of the day is actually really how we solve problems, right? We need skills and solutions, but how do you guys out there like go to university and you realize that the skills that you're picking up in university are theoretical, impractical, an absolute waste of time, and you're spending all that money and time for basically nothing so that when you graduate from university, that uh, all your literal uh, diploma is, your little degree, all it is is a checkbox on a job application. A $100,000 checkbox, okay? I may actually have my $100,000 checkbox in my wallet. I think I have it in here. I think I got it somewhere in here. Do I have it? Where, where's my checkbox? Oh, I want my I want my checkbox. Where is it? Is this it? Oh, look. It's my degree right here from DeVry University. I always keep it in my wallet because it just shows you how worthless this thing is. This little checkbox on a job application that I don't even use. All right. So you go to university and you end up wasting your time because they're teaching you the wrong things or they're teaching you things that aren't relevant or they're teaching you things that are impractical or theoretical, etc. And that's why when you have your diploma, no one in the workplace actually truly gives a shit. And in fact, you're applying for jobs at businesses where the leaders of the businesses do not actually have college degrees themselves. Have you ever thought of that, right? That's a big problem, right? That's a huge issue. So based on that, there needs to be some changes. Here's some additional examples. Obviously, the skills that you're going to gain, that you get from university, for example, are not going to solve your problems. They're not going to provide you with solutions or answers, right? Well, there's also something similar to that. What happens when you have a bad teacher and you're like in uh, you know, elementary school 
or you're in, uh, um, you know, this is very important for, for parents to, to consider, or middle school or high school, or whatever, a bad teacher, or what happens if you have a bad mentor, or what happens if you have a bad role model, okay? A role model is another one. What do you do then, right? And that's all you ever known as you're growing up. What if you have bad resources? What if their bibliography is screwed up? What if they didn't actually do proper research? What if they're biased in their research and just trying to make a drug legal by the FDA? Because they just want to make money. They don't actually care about the health of people, right? These are all a bunch of additional problems that comes with putting your faith in the nurture side of gaining skills or, condu or, or procuring resources from which you, uh, you know, try to uh, handle things. The thing is, is that when you just go to these people, you have a problem. And this is known as, guess what? Conventional wisdom. Conventional wisdom. So, if you're looking at data, and I gotta use this example over here. Um, I gotta do the knowledge pyramid. So hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta change, um, gotta change this here. So, kind of making it go up, and then I gotta put in the knowledge uh, pyramid right here. Please do not forget about this model. This is one of the most important parts of this presentation. Right here is this pyramid. Please, please, please do not forget this for the rest of your life. It's very important. Okay, you have data, then you have information, okay? Information, and then you have knowledge, okay? And then you have wisdom, all right? These are all of the levels of the information or knowledge pyramid basically okay so yeah thanks it's a dope painting it's like my favorite so in order to use this abacus properly you have to understand this concept of the knowledge pyramid okay so data so what does this really rainbowy mess on the right over here represent the nurture right it represents data, information, knowledge, and even wisdom, even conventional wisdom. It's all over here on the nurture side. And you can go to it anytime. You can go to Google anytime. You can go get teach. you can hire teachers. You get a public school teacher. Uh, you, can, you can be an apprentice underneath a master. You can read books. You can find all the resources and get the role models. Or you'll have role models and mentors thrust upon you, or you'll be forced to have them on you. But the bottom line is, is that they are all data, information, knowledge, and wisdom. However, not so much on the wisdom side, because guess what, folks? Wisdom is where you find answers. Wisdom is where you get solutions to problems. Real, unadulterated wisdom. And where does wisdom come from? It comes from suffering. And only suffering, this is how you get wisdom, okay? Very important, very, very important, okay? So, since you understand the knowledge pyramid at this point, you realize that, hey, I need to make sure that I'm targeting wisdom at all times. I need to be gaining wisdom, or I need to be uh, gaining wisdom for myself, through my own suffering and experiences in my life, or I need to be taking advantage of other people's wisdom. Now, naturally, an SI user cannot learn from other people's mistakes. They have to learn from their own mistakes. They have to trial and error. And that's why I was using that trial and error example earlier in this presentation. Okay, fair enough. Naturally, an SE user does not learn from their own mistakes. They have to learn from someone else's mistakes, basically, okay? And that's very natural of uh, you know how it works, okay? Very, very natural, okay? The problem is, is that while while people are focused on learning from their own mistakes or other people's mistakes, it rarely gets to wisdom. Even as a result of their own suffering, it's still they still have a hard time because they have to collect the data. They have to take the time to write things down or actually reflect on what's happening. They have to go get information. And then it turns into knowledge. But knowledge is still not enough 
to get the answers and solutions we need. Because you can go get unlimited knowledge at Google. You can go get unlimited information at Google. And in some cases, you can actually get data and statistics from Google. But none of those things actually provide you with the answers or solutions to your personal problems yourself. None of that actually happens. So in order to make this abacus work for you, you have to understand that you need to be targeting wisdom. Okay. So now we have what's really, really important. Now we have the type grid or the abacus in this case, which is our compass. And then we have nature, right? So we have nature plus uh, oh, excuse me. Nature divided by nurture. Okay. Divided by nurture. Really, really important. Um, okay. Equals uh, your vector. Okay. Okay. And this is nature one, this is nature two, this is nature three, this is nature four. All right, so guys, big warning. This is gonna get really, really complicated, but it's gonna get complicated to tell a very simple thing. So just hang in there with me, all right? Just hang in there, all right. So what is this? What does this little tiny formula represent, okay? It represents a filter. A filter. When you go to Google, for example, and you have data information and knowledge, etc., how are you going to turn it into wisdom? What really is this? How how does it how does this work? Suffering equals the filter. Filter. Literally all wisdom is is just a really good filter of all the data information and knowledge out there. But you can't even build your filter unless you suffer. And through your suffering, you're able to develop that filter. How? What does this filter look like? Remember the four pillars of self-intimacy. <clears throat> Taking responsibility for meeting your own needs. Having personal standards. Having personal boundaries. Uh, etc. And then knowing your personal goals, knowing yourself, that is an example of a filter. Just one example of a filter. There's unlimited filters out there, but it helps you wisely organize your life in such a way where you are prioritizing things properly for you to be successful in your life. The filter is how you apply all of that knowledge and information and data which it becomes knowledge after a while, and you go to Google, for example, you go to mentors, teachers, books, it doesn't matter. It helps you filter those things so that you can handle it. The problem is we rely on the nurture half of the filter far too much as human beings. We rely on the mentors, teachers, masters, books, resources, classes, Google, university, role models, all that form of education, okay? It literally is education. This is nothing more than education. And we rely on education. The problem is, and when it's by itself, it's not filtered, okay? So you have to have nature divisible by the education, right? So here's another way of looking at it. People divided by education, or more accurately, persona. Divided by education equals filter, which equals wisdom, which equals solutions, which equals answers when you try them out. That's basically the formula. Lots of leaps of logic in there, right? But this is literally how it works. Persona over education equals wisdom, okay? So this is literally where it comes, okay? Again, this is a lot of information. 
Hang in there with me. All right. So now what do you do? Here's the thing. I want you guys to understand a special order of operations here. Orders of importance. Identity is the most important one. Camaraderie is the second most important one. And compatibility is the third most important one in terms of priority for these vectors, these nature vectors. And this helps you calculate the persona from this calculus-based approach, from this abacus, okay? It literally has everything to do with this order. So think about it. When you're having to deal with people who are just your type, you have super low compatibility with them. If you're going in camaraderie area, you got super low compatibility with them. And then compatibility is great. It's a little bit easier. So the difficulty increases, okay? Difficulty goes way up, right? It goes way up. So here's your difficulty right here. Difficulty. So because of this difficulty, people don't do this, right? They don't do this. They just want to stay safe. They want to play it safe. They want to focus everything they got on education. But their education is not going to give them the answers to their problems because education is only half the equation. It's not, it's not enough, okay? So you need to add in persona. So which persona, how do you, how do you calculate persona? We understand education. Education equals mentors, classes, teachers, Google, masters, articles, resources, university, role models, etc. That's nice, but it still isn't going to give us the wisdom we seek to solve our own problems, you know? So yeah, I don't know how to do that on this. What are you, what are you talking about? Do you know how to use Microsoft Whiteboard in such a way to be able to do that appropriately? I have no idea. So, anyway, so we're going to go over here. We're going to play with the abacus a little bit. So, let's, let's talk about Anthrax. He's an INFJ, right? So we got his INFJ uh, side over here. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm actually going to erase this. You guys ever like hear about Tony Robbins talking about the answers, the answers to your problems, they're within guys. The answers to your problems are within. You need to unlock the power within, says Tony Robbins, right? You guys ever hear that? He's always talking about that. Well. Guess what? He's technically right. Problem is he just doesn't know how right. He doesn't know how right he is. We're gonna put Anthrax's mind over here. Again. Alright, oh. ENFP, excuse me. Wow, come on, man. ENFP, ISTJ. The little lasso button. Alright, well. Not sure if that's going to work for us completely. So we have Mr. Anthrax up here. And he wants to, uh, but he's taken a lot of education and he's still TE trickster and doesn't know how to keep a dollar to save his life. His bank account's always negative. He's always got overdrafts consistently and he has no idea what to do. And then because of his financial mismanagement, and by the way, I'm just bullshitting here. I don't know if Anthrax is actually this way. I'm just adding into the scenario, you know. But, you know, and then all of a sudden his, his, his girlfriend is, has left him, his wife has left him, his dog left him because he's penniless, you know. He's definitely, uh, definitely uh, penniless. The E is triggering you. Okay. The E. The E is triggering you. Okay. So, we got Mr. Anthrax. He's got the four sides of the mind, right? four sides of the mind. So he's got compatibility right here, uh, CO. He's got camaraderie right here, a little bit of compatibility right here, and he has identity right here, four sides of the mind, okay? Depending on the problem that he's facing, which in this particular situation is to make more money, okay? He has to think about to himself, all right, I need to make more money. 
So which of these four types make more money? Well, that would technically be the TE users. So he would list out ENFP and ISTJ make the most money, technically, right? Okay, awesome. So, but which one of these is higher priority? This is a camaraderie thing, so that means this is a two, and this is a compatible thing, so this means it's a three in, in, uh, in uh, priority, which means he needs to stay focused on ISTJ, even though it's a superego. He should focus on ISTJ. That's not camaraderie, I'm sorry, that's actually compatibility. My bad. But it has less compatibility. So it's still technically higher because this has less compatibility. Therefore, what does he do? The answer is he goes to the ISTJ archetype for help. So this is known as a very interesting process. I'll write it down right here. This is known as the oracle. Very important term. This is known as the oracle. You'll hear about how the zodiac basically creates horoscopes for people and people treat the zodiac as an oracle. My dear friends, the type grade is the same. It is an oracle. It is an oracle, that's how it works, okay? Therefore, in order for Anthrax to have financial success, he needs to obviously get educated about financial management. Therefore, he needs to go find a successful ISTJ, master, teacher, book, university, class, who actually has success, who has a successful portfolio, who handles financial management appropriately, and therefore, Anthrax needs to learn under the ISTJ in order to solve his problem. Here's the issue, though. Anthrax is not an ISTJ. Anthrax is not an ISTJ, which means only a small percentage of what the ISTJ, what he could learn from the ISTJ, will actually make it all the way to his ego. Only a small percentage. What does he do in that situation? He could learn from a bunch of ISTJs and he would benefit a lot from a bunch of ISTJs who are fantastic at uh, financial management. It is his super ego. He's got decent compatibility with them. They're very awesome at financial management. But as much as he can try, he's not an SI hero like an ISTJ. Therefore, he's not able to create the same habits that an ISTJ would create when it comes to learning how to be more financially responsible, right? This is a problem. The point is, it's not good enough to just learn from an ISTJ. Of course, it's not good enough to learn from all the types. And I'm gonna simplify it as I go, folks, so just keep keep being patient with me here. He's not able going to learn, okay? So it goes even further than this. What is the way that he could fast track his way to success on this? Honestly, it's to take the high road. It's to the hardest road. It is the INFJ. Therefore, he goes after the INFJ archetype. And he finds INFJ authors who are financially successful and reading their financial books. He looks at successful INFJs who don't need money like Simon Sinek and he figures out and he finds the biography of Simon Sinek where Simon Sinek talks about his own life and how he got successful. And then Anthrax learns everything he can from Simon Sinek and then applies some pieces of Simon Sinek into his life that he can do right now, maybe some later. 
He goes, finds another INFJ, does the same thing. And another INFJ does the same thing. He hires other INFJs who are more successful than him, does the same thing. He hates their guts. He, they hate his guts. But it's the absolute highest form of camaraderie. And because they have the same exact psychology Anthrax has, they have suffered the same things Anthrax has, which means it will fast track his wisdom because they've already filtered out all of those negative experiences and they're suffering for their own INFJ ego such that they could package it up all nice nights for Anthrax so that he himself can learn how to be a better INFJ from INFJs who are better than him. You see? That's the best way, but Anthrax would have to be willing to uh, put up with being around INFJs or higher other INFJs, knowing full well that they trigger him. He may even have to emulate ENFP to be around them so that he can learn from them. So he literally consumes their experiences, their brains, he consumes their suffering, and he consumes the wisdom gained from their suffering, which because they're an INFJ, statistically, they have the exact same hang-ups Anthrax has. And if they're a lot older than him by many decades, and they're, a lot, and they're financially well off, all of the hang-ups he has now, they've already solved. And they can confer that wisdom upon Anthrax. You see what I'm saying, folks? You see, it's not good enough. It's not good enough to just focus all your might in education because that's the affiliative things to do. INFJs think they can go to class and actually learn shit. <laughs> not really. NFJs, they, they love them some affiliative education. They love it. But nature education is better. Nature over Persona, oh, persona divided by education is better. Nature divided by nurture equals the filter that they need. And then you go to the other side of the mind. Oh, there's ESTP. What if anthrax was obese? Go to the ESTP and learn fitness from the ESTP. The ESTP will make fun of you, tell you to your face that you're weak, worthless, useless, but you'll learn fitness from them and you'll learn really fast and get really capable at it. Folks, this is the power of camaraderie. This is the power of identity. If you can find identity types and become their student, the student of your identity types, you will be on the fast track to getting the answers that you need to solve your problems because you are able to look in the right place. Think about it this way. I've struggled with obesity for the majority of my life. I met Thomas DeLauer. He's an ENTP. He's an ENTP endomorph, just like me. That's my body morphism. I'm an endomorph, okay? He's an ENTP, just like me. He suffered in the same way I have, and he has solved the problem. And I take his solutions, and I solve my problem. Obesity goes away. Don't you get it? It's not good enough to immerse yourself in education and educate yourself to find the answers to your issues. It's not good enough. You have to go to the authors of books who are your same type or potentially the other four sides of your mind to get a more complete picture. But you're always going to benefit the most from seeking out people who are the same exact type as you are, who are better than you and more advanced for you, which is kind of hard for an INFJ to do because of SE inferior. Oh, I don't want him to know that my performance sucks. Well, that's why you're going to begin with, so you get your performance up, obviously. You see what I'm saying? Take Barb, an ENTJ. She would have to go to other ENTJs who are struggling with depression and have beat depression. Look for their blogs. Wait, that means she'd have to be really good at the type grid to be able to type other people. That's how it works. Right? Or there's Cayman, Mr. ENFP himself. Good old Cayman. We love Cayman. I love Cayman. It's one of my favorite people in the community. You know, he's got he's got his own set of problems, but he finds an ENFP hustler and he learns from the ENFP hustler 
And even though Cayman's like, I'm not going to hustle drugs, but I see the concepts you're applying in your hustle, bro. I'm going to apply that in my legal pursuits. And then all of a sudden, Cayman becomes more successful. But then it's like, well, dang, I need to learn fitness. Oh, I could go learn from an INFJ. Oh, but they're really compatible with me. They're at risk of enabling me. That's why when you look at the nature side here of this whiteboard, notice compatibility is number three in terms of priority, and number one is the highest priority. Therefore, when it comes to speaking and conversing with types to get of other people, of the archetypes, to get the oracle, to make the oracle work for you, you have to be willing to suffer the most with the least possible compatibility. The least possible compatibility is your identity type, so it's yourself. So you'd be willing to go converse with yourself in the mirror. A, a, a person of your type who's 20, 30 years older than you who is successful, kind of like me and Dr. Robert Glover. He's 60 years old, he's banging a 40-year-old with a fantastic marriage. Gee, I wonder how he pulled that off. Maybe I should go talk to him. See what I'm saying, folks? Super important. Folks, the type grid is an oracle. Use it this way. Understand that while you guys educate yourself so much, it means absolutely nothing unless you are filtering it through the archetypes, unless you're filtering it through the abacus, unless you're filtering it through the oracle. And who becomes your oracle are people of your identity type or people who are within the four sides of your mind. Okay? Target the types that have high camaraderie with you, with the highest being your identity, and those people will advance you because they are so similar to you that they have already suffered and had the same hangups you've had such that you're able to solve your problems. Cayman would be very, very well off if he could just come up with the money needed to pay for one hour of Conor McGregor's time. Think of everything he could possibly learn from Conor McGregor. Or if he could drop the 25 G's to have one hour of time with Tony Robbins, an ENFP. Imagine what could be done. Yes, the solution is simple, folks, but I had to go this far with it to show you specifically how it works and why it works, okay? Go to the types of people who you would, who are just like you, which guess what? You have to risk conflict. You have to risk being in conflict with these people. And you're at the highest risk of having the most conflict with people who are your same type. But if you humble yourself, you will be lifted up. If you humble yourself, gosh, ENTJs hate fellow ENTJs, but imagine Barb humbling herself to talk to an ENTJ about their struggle with depression and everything this other ENTJ woman did to pull it off so that Barb could learn from her and become a better version of herself. And she humbled herself and focused on listening and, not, and being the student and not the master. That is the secret to success. This cutting edge presentation is the secret to anyone's success in life right here. Nature divided by nurture equals filter. Persona divided by education equals wisdom. The type grid is your oracle. Use it as such and you will be successful in absolutely every single area of your life. If you have an area of your life where you are lacking, then you need to go handle it, and this is how you do it. People talk about the law of attraction. They talk about the law of attraction. They talk about mindset. What does law of attraction mean? What does mindset mean? Right? Let me tell you, mindset and law of attraction literally is this, the type grid. 
the oracle. That's all it is. Because people spend so much time concentrating on this one thing under the law of attraction so they can manifest it in their lives. But the thing is, is that the people who have high camaraderie with them have the exact same interests and desires they do. And eventually, the answer will be presented to the original person who's wanting and trying to manifest this thing with the law of attraction. That answer will be provided to them by someone with high camaraderie with them. <coughs> this is literally the most secret success. I could rewrite Oprah's book, The Secret, and blow it out of the water because nothing is compared to this model on the planet when it comes to personal success. Nothing. This is literally, this model is literally the mechanics behind the law of attraction. This is how the law of attraction works mechanically. So, you could find people who are similar to Maynard James Keenan. Now, I do want to leave you guys with one additional tip, especially with Bar for Barb. Especially for Barb. Barb the ENTJ. And also James the ESTP. Also Anthrax. Because you guys... You guys are SE users, okay? You guys are SE users. And SE users, while they have that super high NI, SE users sometimes understand that they have some hang-ups uh, when it comes to utilizing this model and be successful. Why? Because in order for you to use the Oracle, in order for you to use to this optimized version of the law of attraction for you to gain personal success in your life, you have to do one thing and be very good at this one thing, a particular skill, and that skill is how to use the type grid. The problem is, SE users oftentimes struggle with the type grid because they have a hard time remembering the type grid on the fly because they're not an SI user. So, I will now give you folks the secret behind making an SE user an expert at using the type grid right now. So, what I want you to do is create a spreadsheet or even a big giant piece of paper, huge piece of paper, two huge pieces of paper and you put these two huge pieces of paper on your wall, a big wall in your home. One is for men and one is for women, okay? And then what I want you to do is go on Facebook and take the photos of all the people that you know what their confirmed type is and put them in the order of the type grid. Create an actual, write out an actual type grid on these two pieces of paper. Put men on the type grid on the left and women on the type grid on the right on the right and you can see their pictures. You'll even notice some visual typing similarities between how they look. You see what I'm saying? So then you have this mural up of type grids, two type grids, and then every time you successfully type someone, you add their photo to the wall. And then eventually, when you're going out and you're meeting people as you study this type grid over time, you just look at it with your extroverted sensing, you'd be like, hey, that guy's just like a Jack. That woman is a Shirley. That person is a Michael. You see what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, especially like ENTJs, for example, their extroverted thinking, they will start to realize and compare people that they come into contact with with people that they have on their grid at home mentally. They can even have that photo of the grid their grids on their phone and look at it and look at the person. There's visual typing, oh, this guy's acting just like this other person. And then you can start classifying people accurately and typing them accurately with the type grid. And then as soon as you have done this, guess what?
as soon as you have done this, well, you're an expert at how to type people. And then once you're an expert at how to type people, then you can use the Oracle. You can use this model to bring yourself to more success in your life. And then you don't have to be miserable anymore. You don't have to suffer anymore because you got the fast track to wisdom. You got the fast track to solutions, answers that you've been looking for your entire life. And it's right there. You may not like the answers, though. Be warned. The answers that you may get from, peop from fellow identity types, oh, you may not like those answers. But that's why they're successful and you aren't. Don't forget that. So, anyway, that concludes this Cutting Edge with CSJ episode for August 2020. It is now time for question and answer. So, if you guys have any questions relating to the content of this particular uh, presentation, by all means, put it into the live chat. <laughs> Was that pretty good, guys? Did you like this? Uh, did you like this video? Um, is this like the most powerful one I've ever done for Cutting Edge? Or uh, I don't know. Maybe I thought the dating tips one was pretty powerful. I don't know. You guys think I should just randomly release this one on YouTube because of how powerful it is? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I love me some Pellegrino. Mm. Okay, James Morkin. So I should talk to ISFJs and ENTPs over INTPs and ESFJs as an ENTP. Uh, oh, I thought, oh, yeah, my bad. Um, uh, should I talk to INTPs and ESFJs over any of the compatible types? Yes, James Morgan, you want to target your uh, quadra. So target your own quadra because that increases the camaraderie that you have, and you're more likely to get better solutions out of them. Uh, so, for example... You, you need relationship advice, so you would want to talk to relationship experts who are ENTPs. Well, one of the best relationship experts out there who is an ENTP is Dr. Robert Glover. And he always responds to shit. And he's a fantastic guy, you know. <coughs> so, yeah, that's just one example. But, yes, you want to target your own quadra first. Target your own quadra first with your own type and your polar opposite being the most important. Okay? Super, super important because those are the people who identify with you the most. So for an ENTP, you would target ENTPs first. You would target ISFJs second, okay? Then INTPs and then ESFJs last in that order, okay? Target them that way. And then sometimes, though, it's necessary for you to consult with INTJs just to get their rational perspective because what if, because you're logical, and you're being irrational about the decision and you're not and you need a rational answer so which case i'd be like talk to an intj relationships expert rollo tomasi send him a message right he's an intj you see what i'm saying and gain his interest. remember a wise man has many counselors okay a wise man has many people who's offering him advice all the time See the type grid as your oracle or a team of oracles for you. You can always use any of the 16 types as an oracle for you, but the best oracle is your identity type. That's the best one. Uh, yeah, you could target ESFPs and INTJs next. Yes, exactly. Who are the shadows of the ISFJ. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. 
Yes, let me show all my friends and tell them I'm not crazy. All right, fair enough. Okay. I might I might release it on YouTube. I might do it. People kind of it would be nice if everyone like knew about this and how this works. So Any other questions? <coughs> Any other questions? All right. Looks like there's no other questions, kitty. I'm going to put my foot on you. Oh, yes. You're so warm on my foot. And I'm just resting my foot on you. And you're so Essie Trickster, you don't care. You're just like, meh. Meh. My meh cat. Oh, got a question. Emailed Anthrax. So it would be worth my while to target ESTPs to grow physically. Absolutely it would. Go up to the ESTP and be like, bro, I'm weak. You can make me stronger, please. And the ESTP would be so happy to do so. You just have to be willing to admit that you're weak. Uh, would Bill Gates be a good person to read books for an INTP? I don't see why not. I also think uh, who are the author of Ghost in the Wires would be great for an INTP. Kevin D. Mitnick, right? Or uh, Steve Wozniak, another successful INTP. Or Elon Musk, another successful INTP. All right. So the three, two, one is just a uh, priority system. Targeting Oracle uh, from compatibility types, yeah, that'll help you, but sometimes they'll enable you, so you may not get all the help that you need. Targeting camaraderie types, that's second place, so it's it's helpful. And then the best Oracle that you can extract from the type grid is identity, which is your own type. Uh, Bruce Lee, man, uh, the way of the, the the warrior within, with uh, by um, um, <clears throat> John Little, talks about Bruce Lee's uh, philosophy, or uh, the Tao of Jeet Kun, <coughs> the Tao of Jeet Kune Do. <coughs> Allergic to my cat. Whoa. Uh, yeah, that is off topic. Um, yeah, those are some authors there. Yeah, guys, if you, if you target people of XYZ type and you learn from them, you'll be far more successful. All right, fantastic. I am going to close question and answer. Thank you all for attending this month's Cutting Edge episode. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Pretty awesome topic, right? And uh, that's why the Cutting Edge episodes, we talk about a lot of crazy stuff that we don't really tell anybody else. So, awesome. I should talk to an ENTP about that uh, cat allergy. Yeah, I probably, I probably should do that, shouldn't I? And yes, that's my painting. It comes from, uh, from uh, Aneta. Uh, she gave me the painting. And she shipped it to me all the way from Europe. God bless her. I'm very thankful to have the painting in uh, in my office. Uh, it is absolutely beautiful and probably my most favorite piece of art I've ever uh, beheld in my life. So I think it's awesome. Um, I really, okay, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, all good, Mr. Morgan. Um, so cool. Anyway, folks, uh, that's everything. I hope you found it valuable. Thank you for being our Journeyman members. And uh, go ahead and uh, check out that website and whatnot. And uh, that'll be uh, fantastic. So anyway, I'll see you all later. Have a good night.